What is evapotranspiration and is it important? Coming up in this video. I'm Sprinkler Nerd Andy and you're watching another episode of Sprinkler TV. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about what is evapotranspiration. And it's a tricky word, it's a scientific word. And if you're in the industry, you've probably heard it before. And if you've just purchased a smart controller, you've also probably heard it before. Smart controllers like the Hunter HydroWise, the Beehive, the Rachio, all of these new smart controllers have a capability which utilizes something called evapotranspiration or ET. So let me explain it for you and try to make it really just as simple as possible. You could go get books like the Irrigation 6th Edition. You can get really into the details and the science of this. There are many factors that go into calculating evapotranspiration. But what I wanna do is kind of stick to the basics in this video and really just tell you what it is. So evapotranspiration is the combination of two words, evaporation and transpiration. Okay, you put those two terms together and you get evapotranspiration. And essentially it is, you know, Transpiration is the process by which the plants consume water. So when a plant drinks water and it pulls water up from the soil, that is when the plant is transpiring. So it's the movement of water from the soil up through the roots into the plant and out through the leaves, that's transpiration. Then you have evaporation, which is just simply water evaporating from the surface of the ground, okay, from the soil itself. And both of those terms, transpiration and evaporation, are water loss from the soil. So evapotranspiration rate is often used to describe the total water loss in the soil due to evaporation and transpiration, all right? And evapotranspiration is actually really important because it's the primary component of what you might call irrigation water requirements, okay? So evapotranspiration really determines the amount of water required to maintain healthy plants. In a perfect world, we would give our plants exactly the right amount of water. No more, no less, just the right amount of water to be as healthy as possible. And evapotranspiration is the scientific word used to describe that amount of water, all right? So here, let me give you an example. Let's say it is June, wherever you live, and the ET rate or the evapotranspiration rate for today is a quarter inch, 0.25 inches. Well, in a perfect world, you would then reapply exactly 0.25 inches of water so that you are replenishing to the plant what the plant lost at that rate. And so the ET rate is what is used to determine that amount of water loss, okay? And we're sticking to that in this video. We're not going into the weeds of distribution uniformity, sprinkler spacing, all those other things to determine the actual amount of water that you need to apply I'm just framing this around what is evapotranspiration. It is the water loss from the plant and the soil, okay? So one of the common questions that we receive here or that people ask are, what are the factors that are used to determine evapotranspiration? And there are four of them, okay? So here they are in no particular order. The first one is temperature, okay? You can imagine that the warmer it is outside, the more the plant is going to consume and transpire and the more water loss there will be from the surface of the soil due to evaporation, right? Temperature goes up, more water loss. Temperature goes down, less water loss, okay? Then we have solar radiation, the sunshine. The sunnier it is outside, the more water loss we have through the plant and through the soil surface due to evaporation, okay? The third one, humidity. The drier it is, like in Tucson, Arizona, the more water loss there will be through transpiration and evaporation. And then the fifth one is wind speed. The windier it is outside, the more water loss there will be due to transpiration and 
evaporation, okay? So you put all those four things together and that's when you, you have this term called evapotranspiration. And the thing that you need to, I guess, consider most is that it's a variable factor. It can change day to day, week to week, month to month, but there is something called a seasonal evapotranspiration curve. And that is really the basis of, you know, water conservation. We want to match the seasonal ET or evapotranspiration curve from the spring, summer, and fall. And traditional irrigation control systems, timers, clocks, call it whatever you want, run like clockwork. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 7 a.m. for the same amount of time. And I'll show you, if I haven't displayed it already, this seasonal ET curve, because in the spring, you need to water either a lot less time or a lot less frequently. And in the summer, you actually may need to water more. And then as you go into fall, you'll wanna taper your watering off again. And so the best time to save water or where the biggest opportunity to save water is in the spring and the fall where we can match that evapotranspiration curve for the season, all right? And then the last question we get is, can you control evapotranspiration? And it's kind of a trick question because no, you can't control evapotranspiration. It is based on environmental factors. However, if you were to plant a windscreen, then certainly there would be less wind on the plants on the other side of the windscreen, right? If you planted more shade trees, there'd be more shade on the turf grass. So it is not possible to actually control evapotranspiration, but you can change the microclimates of your site by changing the type of plants and how you plant. Otherwise, what you can control is how you water. And so you want to actually control your watering to match ET as best that as possible. And I guess finally, it's important to remember that ET is a calculation, okay? It is not measuring real-time water loss in the soil right now. The best way to do that is to use a soil moisture sensor. It's actually the only tool you can use to measure real-time ET loss as it's happening in the landscape. But evapotranspiration curves and calculations are great for estimating and forecasting purposes. And if you implement them right with your smart timer, you can save water. So I hope that helps. If you have any more questions about smart controllers, evapotranspiration, how to schedule, program, set up your timer, feel free to reach out to us. And any other technical questions you have about ET, drop it in the comments down below. Love answering all of your questions. And anything else that comes up, you can reach us by phone, chat, email, text message. And until the next Sprinkler Supply Store technical review, happy sprinkling. We'll see you then.